ready. Ready to take a ride. Grab your coffee and strap yourself in. If you listen, we can hear God's plan. Because the show is about to begin. You're listening. You're listening to the Omega Man Radio Network. Hope you all had a good weekend out there. Welcome back uh, to our Monday, June 10th, 2024 marathon. We've got uh, Vangelist Joseph Farrar in the house. Brother Joseph, would you like to open us in prayer? Sure. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this ministry tonight, Lord. As we start off, Lord, we just want to tell everybody that we love you, that Jesus loves you, and he really cares for you. And you can see that what he did, he proved it on the cross. He did it, he laid down his life for us because he loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We preach the gospel tonight. It's the message of the good news. This is good news tonight. But there are some that will mock the gospel. And as we go on tonight, we look in Second Peter chapter 2, chapter 3. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Scoffers, mockers of the gospel, even as we preach the love of God, well, it's not going to be good for them. If they continue in that way, they need to get their heart right with God and to uh, repent. And uh, we pray tonight for this ministry. We pray for everybody that's tuned in right now from the north, south, east, and west of the globe. And it's really raining here in Port St. Lucie, Florida. And we really need it uh, for the ground, for the animals, for the grass. Everything's been very dry and extremely hot. And that's the way it was last year. Very humid. And uh, in times like these, we live in times like these. These are the last days. These are the perilous times. This is the end times. Then Jesus is going to come back. But first, we have to preach the gospel into all the world and endure it to the end. And then he will come. We have to endure all things till he comes. We pray for the orphans. We do not forget them tonight. Lord, we pray that you pour your spirit out upon them and send help, send ministries to help them, orphanages. And we pray that people that have the money that are rich in this world, according to the Bible, will be uh, uh, cheerful givers to the orphans. And the widows, Lord, we pray for the church to take care of the widows, Lord, in these uh, last days that we're living in. Wherever you live tonight, there is, uh, the gospel can reach you wherever. This is a Holy Ghost meeting tonight. This is a devil-chasing, Holy Ghost, blood-washed meeting tonight. This is meaning business, God's business. We must take care of business, the Lord's business. Can't you see I must be about my father's business? Jesus said to Joseph and Mary, 
when he was in and lost and he was in the temple, they thought he was lost. No, he was in the temple and he was uh, talking to them great words of wisdom and he confounded them because he was way ahead of them. He was anointed of the Father. But he had to uh, spend 12 more years with his parents, submit to them before he went out at 30 to preach. To preach the word in season, out of season. We pray for the intercessors tonight. All those that operate the equipment, we pray tonight for Shannon Davis and all the intercessors and everybody that's with us. Lord, we ask for your anointing tonight on them as they agree with us and we're in one accord. The Bible says it's like fresh oil coming from heaven down on Aaron's beard and you command the blessing. We ask that you command the blessing tonight from heaven Lord, from the throne of God, as you listen tonight, you never sleep, you never slumber. Your ear is always open, Lord. Father God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, send this word. You know the people. Without you, we can do nothing. We need tonight the anointing of God to preach and to sing and to pray and to reach the people tonight, the power of the Holy Spirit that takes the word and shows people that they need a Savior. So in times like these, we need a Savior. So I pray these prayers in Jesus' name for the peace of Jerusalem. And tonight we pray in times like these that we're living in right now, and you have to make a decision tonight if you hear the gospel. Make your decision. Get ready. Because you never know. You never know. That's the way we have to live. We never know what's going to happen tomorrow. In times like these, you need a Savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor holds. And grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus. The only one. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor holds. And grips the solid rock. In times like these, you need the Bible. In times like these, oh, be not idle. Be very sure. Be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. In times 
days like these, I have an anchor in times like these. I have a Savior, I'm very sure, I'm very sure. My anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. I'm very sure, I'm very sure, my anchor holds and grits the solid rock. Are you very sure tonight your anchor holds the solid rock? That is Jesus. Much stronger than the rock of Gibraltar. He is the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm in chapter 21 of Luke tonight in this service to you in love. Verse 1, And he looked up and saw the rich man casting their gifts into the treasury, and he saw also a certain poor widow casting in two mites. And he said, Of a truth I say unto you, that this poor widow has cast in more than they all. For all these have of their abundance cast in unto the offerings of God. But she of her pensuri has cast in all the living that she had. She gave it all. Are we giving it all for the Lord are we giving it all that we can with the Lord? It's only by His grace that He gives us to do it. Paul said, I did all these things because of the grace of God, the strengthening grace that moves upon our heart, that Paul told Timothy to be strong in the grace of God. In Jesus' name. Everything we've said unto now, Jesus, is in your name to the Father. I'm going on in the next verse, in verse 5. I'm in Luke 21, 5. And as some spake of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts, he said, as for these things which you behold, the days will come in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. We're in the book of Luke tonight, 21, and Jesus is given prophetic scriptures telling the future like the book of Matthew 24. And Luke writes in verse 7, And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? We know the Jews were always looking for a sign. And now they bring it here. How are we going to know? How are we going to know? He says in verse 8, Luke 21, 8, and he said, Take heed that you be not deceived. 
Everybody hear that tonight? That's the most important thing in your life, that you are not deceived. You have to believe the truth. God does not deceive us. God gives us the truth. But those that will mock the truth, he will send things to deceive them. That's in the book of Thessalonians, because they rejected the truth. They didn't love the truth. So God said things to them to deceive them, deceiving spirits. So God is a just God. And he's talking to his disciples here. And he says, for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ. That's the anointed. The Christ is the anointed. Jesus is the Christ. He is the anointed one that the Jews were waiting for thousands of years. And here he is. And the time draweth near, go you not therefore after them. Don't run after these deceivers. Because I am the Lord. Follow me. And he's going to give them the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to guide and lead them into all truth. Believers, children of God, sons of God, women of God, God gives us the Holy Spirit. John 21, when he went to the cross, I'm going to send you a comforter. He's going to be just like me. And he will help you in every way, just like I did while I was here in the flesh, in my body. And he will guide and lead you into all truth. So you have an unction in your spirit. When your spirit is born again, and you have a discerning spirit, an anointing in your spirit that you will not be deceived. That's why you will notice sometimes that you feel an unrest in your spirit about something, and that is the Holy Spirit telling you something's not right. Or the people call it a check in their spirit. It's the anointing in your spirit when you were born again that God gave you that. Be not deceived. Don't listen to false Christ. And they will come. They came before Jesus. They came while Jesus was here. They come after Jesus. He said, don't listen to them. You know me. You spent this time with me on earth. You heard the word, you will have the Holy Spirit, and he will bring back everything to your remembrance that I have taught you. But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. Because they definitely can terrify people if you've ever been close to war or combat. And it'll shake, shake you from the crown of your head to the balls of your feet. And it's, uh, it will terrify people to the point where some of them will not be able to, uh, to operate or move. They're just terrified. Just totally terrified. And even hearing about it, some people give way to fear. And that's the weapon that we have to fight against, fear. That's the enemy's fear. For these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. The end is not by and by. The end is coming, but it's not now. 
We have to go through these things, hear of these things, and these things will come to pass because Jesus said it, and they will happen. So we have to be smart and listen to Jesus like the early Christians did. Jesus then said unto them, right? Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. The same thing is said in Matthew 24. And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines and pestilences, and fearful sights and great signs shall they be from heaven. Jesus is prophesying the future. And it's in the book. That's why we have the written word. We have the truth. We know the future because Jesus was a prophet. He was a priest. He was a king. And he's king of all kings, lord of all lords, and he is God. And he is the great I am. I am Alpha, I am Omega. I'm the beginning and the end, all through the middle I know. And all these signs shall there be from heaven. Fearful sights. Fearful sights. But before all these things, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into the prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake, the followers of Jesus, the disciples, the apostles, all those that had the ministry with Jesus. And it shall turn to you for testimony Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what you shall answer. So they said to themselves, when we get in this predicament, we're going to try to figure it out and say what we're going to say when these judges ask us questions. And he said, some of them will be put to death. And they said, Jesus said, don't do that. Trust me, and I will give you the wisdom on what to speak to them. Verse 15, I'm in Luke 21. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren, and kinfolk, and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. Why? Because they followed Jesus. Because they were of Jesus. Because they have Jesus' name. And they're doing his cause. His cause. To tell the truth to the people. To go out and make disciples. To tell the truth to the world. That Jesus is the way and he's the only way. There is no other religion. There's only one way to heaven and that's Jesus. There are some people that preach, well you can get to heaven this way. You can get to heaven that way. You can get to heaven this way. And it doesn't matter what things you do in life. We're all going to get there. No, no, no. Jesus stood up before all the world and he said to everybody, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. 
that settles it. People will be betrayed by their own parents because of religion, because of these Pharisees and Sadducees that were preaching false religion, making disciples of hell, and they wouldn't change. They wouldn't come to Jesus and drink the new wine and the wineskins. They wanted the old. And they corrupted it. And they added so much of their own teachings and their own ways that it was entangling everybody that they were teaching them not the truth. And they were deceiving them. They were deceivers. What did Jesus say in John chapter 10? All those that came before me were liars and deceivers. He is the true shepherd. And the shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Verse 17, verse 18, but there shall not a hair of your head perish. In your patience, possess ye your souls. We all need to be patient. God is patient, long-suffering, kind. We need to take one thing at a time. We need to take one day at a time. That's what Jesus taught. But here he's telling the future because they were all marveling at the temple which uh, some of those stones were like uh Enormous size. And it was a wonder of the world at that time. That ten, that temple. It was a wonder of the world. So Jesus went in and answered their questions. Just like in Matthew 24. When he was answering their questions. He said many of the things that Luke is writing. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation therefore is nigh. Jesus cried over Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you didn't listen. Your time, you rejected me, your Messiah. And you will receive the judgment, Jerusalem, for rejecting your Messiah. The people rejected Jesus. 1.1 million people were slaughtered by the Roman army in 70 A.D. But the Christians escaped. Why? Because they listened to the truth. They listened to Jesus and they did what Jesus said. And they were prepared. Just like we are, there is no excuse. God has given revelation to the world in his creation. God has given his mind his thoughts, his knowledge in the Bible to tell us what's going to happen, what to be prepared for, what to be working on in our lives, Christians, to use wisdom, to get wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Listen to him and respect him. 
He is God. And a fool, God said a fool does not believe in God. A fool. You have to listen. Many people today did not listen. Well, there was a cop standing on the corner telling people not to go down that road, and some of them didn't listen, and they went into the ditch, and they died. He warned them. He warned them. Jesus is warning them here. God always warns us. That is the great thing about God. A lot of times in our lives, as we're walking with God, He will warn us. He will warn us. I remember a man of God had a word of knowledge, and he saw a people that were going on a long trip, and God showed him in the spirit that their tire was bad. And uh, God saved them from possibly getting killed and doing uh, real destruction to that car or that van, whatever they were driving. And I was right there with the pastor, and the people received it. They changed the tire, and they had a good trip. You see how God takes care of us if we listen? Sometimes he gives dreams and visions. So here he says, Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter thereunto. Depart out. Go this way, God says. Do this. And the Christians did it. 1.1 million Jews were killed. And the Christians did what God told them, and they did not suffer any hurt. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. God is telling us here that these are going to be fulfilled. Not one jot or one comma or one tittle, it says, of the Word of God is going to change. Everything that is written will come to pass. And we have to listen. And we have to be mindful to listen to the Lord and stay in the Word. And to pray. To pray. Because we serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. But woe, he says, unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles unto the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. That is the times that we live in. We are the Gentiles, and our time is being fulfilled. We live in a dispensation of grace. And the Gentiles, the time will be fulfilled. And Jesus is going to come back and take care of the promises that he made to Israel and the people that love him and are his. Then Jesus talks about himself. Himself. 
Verse 25, Luke 21, And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Coming with his angels and his saints. This is the second coming. With his angels and saints. We were told in Acts chapter 1, why do you look up? But Jesus is coming back the same way. He's going up. He left the earth. He was here for over 30 what? 33, 33 and a half, 33 years or more. Then he went up and ascended. And he's in heaven now, sitting on the right hand of the Father, and he's coming back. And this is the second coming. And on a cloud with his angels and straits, saints. This is when he comes back. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh. Look up when you start to see all this happening like it is now. You see what's happening right now in Israel. That's one of the signs. Wars and rumors of wars. Terrifying sights. What they did to the people of Israel, they cut off the heads of babies, they raped children, they raped young women, they cut off their heads and killed them, assaulted them. Terrible sights. Terrible. So look up, because all these things have to happen, and we have to get out the gospel. We have to do God's will. We cannot do it by ourselves. We do it with God, we do it with the Holy Spirit, and every one of us that belongs to Jesus Christ has work to do. It says we get saved, and then it says we are his workmanship, Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. All the works we did before are dead works. Now God's got works for us to do. And to go into all the world as he tells us what to do. He tells us. We take our orders from him. We follow him. And he has the works for us to do. And we're doing them now. This is a work of God, that you do not perish. You that are listening tonight, God is talking to you. If you don't know Jesus, God is talking to you and the church. And the church. Because here he's talking to his disciples. He's giving them instructions about future events. That's why they put it in the book. Now he talks about the parable of the fig tree. And he spake to them a parable, Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. They all knew that. That was common knowledge amongst them. That was a way of life. 
and Jesus was using it as an example to get them into spiritual things. So likewise you, when you see these things come to pass, know that ye, that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. The kingdom of God is coming from heaven. The kingdom of God is already here. It's in us. But the king is coming. And God is nigh at hand. Truly I say unto you, this generation not, shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Many people think that we're this generation. That we're the generation. That Jesus was talking about. Now all these signs, most of them about earthquakes and famines and wars were always going on. And there's a few more in Matthew. Ethnic groups shall come against ethnic groups. And uh, all these are already written in Matthew 24. And here this one is really zeroing in on what happened with the Jews in 70 AD. And they were destroyed. Because they did not receive their Messiah. So the judgment of God came on them. And now we've had 2,000 years of living on this evil planet. Because they didn't receive the Messiah. Jesus Christ. So now God has a will. God has a plan. It's all in his word. This is some of it tonight. And you got to know, and I got to know for sure. If God said it, I believe it. Verse 32 of Luke 21. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away. Till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words shall not pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away. But not my words. My words come from my father. And I speak what he tells me to speak. Watch and pray. Very important, everybody. Christians and non-Christians. And take heed to yourselves. Verse 34 of Luke 21. Lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surviving and drunkenness. And the cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unaware. Another way, you're not ready. You're not ready. Because you're not living right. You're not holy. You're not doing what God told you to do. Christians. So fighting and drunkenness in the cares of this life. That's a headache. As a seizure of pain from drunkenness. Only those that drank alcohol know what a hangover is and a headache from drinking. That's a clogged mind. People cannot operate the next day. They have to stick their head under the shower or stick it in, in a basin with ice to get their brain working right so that they could go to work and do whatever they have to do. 
But the brain isn't working because of sin, a debauchery, a gluttony, extreme indulgence in bodily pleasure, and especially sexual pleasures, behavior of sex, drugs, alcohol, is all in moral living. Jesus is talking to his disciples. Christians can fall into temptation. And Jesus says in the next verse, For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. I pray it does not catch you in a snare, and you will not be ready. He says, Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. I believe that's the rapture of the church. That's what comes first before the second coming. And church, we need to be ready, living a holy life. Surely not living a life with overcharged sins and surviving and drunkenness and the cares of this life that are more important than the things of God. And we're not ready when Jesus comes in the rapture. We're not ready to go to the marriage feast of the Lamb. We're not ready to stand before him when he gives out our rewards. And in that day, time, he was teaching in the temple. And at night he went out and abode in the mount that is called the Mount of Olives. And all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple for to hear him. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You know, When a preacher gets a word like this from the Lord, if he doesn't tell the people, then the blood is on his hand. If he doesn't warn them or tell them, the blood is on his hand. He will have to answer to God why he did not preach that message, why he did not tell the people. Tonight, I've told you, my hands are clean in love. My hands are clean. I've told you. It is written in the books in heaven about this ministry right now that I've told you. And God will use that against you if you don't listen And reject the love of God. That's just the way it is. We all have to give account. For the works that we've done in this body. And people that reject the love of God. It's going to be terrible for them. Terrible. No heaven. No heaven for all eternity. Separated from God. Separated from God, separated from the joy of God, separated from His presence, separated from all the saints, separated into suffering and burning and gnashing of teeth for all eternity. 
Why didn't I listen to the preacher? Why didn't I listen when I heard it? I had it right in my heart. Why didn't I listen to him? That's what many people are saying right now, but it's too late. It's too late. Today is the day of salvation. Today, if you hear the word of God, the Bible says, do not harden your heart. That means to reject the love of God. You could say, well, God isn't talking to me. Well, yes, he is, because that's the way he works. He chooses the foolishness of preaching to bring people to salvation. I was lost, and he had someone tell me that I was lost. And I came to the Lord. I did not want to be separated from a loving God, and especially Jesus. I always believed in Jesus. But I wasn't right with God. I had to get right. So did Paul the Apostle. So did all the Apostles. They had to be born again. They had to get right. They had to get into the kingdom. It's, it's not different for anybody. It's all the same. We're all human. We all have 24 hours in a day. And we all are responsible creatures. God made us responsible. He made you to be responsible. He's given you the mind to make the right decision. You don't want to bring harm to yourself. You don't want to bring harm to your family or your loved ones. I don't want to see that happen to my family. This is this is so real. It is so real that It's so powerful and such filled with such weight, weight and consequences, consequences that people will pay if they say no to God. God is a loving God. God loves you, my friend. God is not your enemy. God does not want to hurt you. Jesus loves you very much. And he can help you and change your whole life. And he can give you a gift tonight called eternal life to be with him forever. And because of the time... I'm going to pray right now. It's called the sinner's prayer. And what you have to do is say it after me, but you have to be sincere and mean it from your heart to the Lord. And that you're making a commitment to a living God and you can trust him. Remember what he said, everything will happen of what I've said. Everything in this book is the truth. So let's pray, Father. Let's pray right now. Pray to the best of your ability. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you right now, and I believe, I believe that I am a sinner, and I'm sorry for all my sins, and I ask for mercy I ask for mercy, and I ask that you cleanse me now by your precious blood at the mercy seat in heaven and make me pure. I believe you died. I believe you rose again from the dead, and I believe you're sitting on the right hand of the Father in heaven. 
I confess it with my mouth, and I believe it in my heart. And right now, I stand before you, Father, in the name of Jesus, and I confess, and I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart and to be my personal Lord and to be my Savior. The goodness of God leads people to repentance. God is so good. He is so good that he helps us to change and to come to him. We come to him by faith. But now you have the gift of eternal life in you. You've asked him to come in and now he's in you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in you. And you are a new person. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things will go away. All things will become new. Get yourself a Bible if you don't have one. A good place to start is in the book of John and also the epistles of John. They talk about the love of God. They give us understanding about his love, his acceptance. He's accepted you tonight into his family. Right now you're a citizen of heaven. And you're washed with the blood. And pray and ask him to guide and lead you to a full gospel church where they're preaching the gospel where you can have a pastor and he can teach you the word of God because God wants to fulfill your purpose here on earth with the works that he has for you to do. And that's what the Lord made here on earth, the church, the church of Jesus Christ. We're all members. We're all a family of God. And we love one another, and we love God with all our heart, mind, and our soul. He loves you so much, my friend. This is the greatest moment of your life. As you draw near to God, God will draw near to you. And he is close to you right now. He's so close that he's in you. Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Joe and Joanne. We leave you now, but we're in the same family, the kingdom of God. Someday I'll see you in heaven as you run your race and as God gives you the grace to do what he's called you to do. We love you. Until next time, praise the Lord. Amen. Great word today. Brother Joseph, what would you like to title your message for the archive? Yeah. Jesus means what he says. I love it. My friend, thank you very much for coming on today. It was a great word. I'll have this in the archive here in a few hours. Encourage people to share it. And we look forward to being with you again next week, my friend. Okay, my friend. Thank you. Love you. Love you, too. Thank Say you, hello sister. to everybody. Is your mother still there? She uh, went back uh, on a plane last night, and she's uh, she's halfway through there. I just checked on her flight. She's in Qatar. About a two-hour layover, and then they fly into Atlanta. We sure did enjoy okay. having her here. Yeah, that was great, huh? Yes, sir. Already missing her. Okay, and brother. Hoping it won't be seven years again. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you got to show Joanne how to, uh, we sent you an offering and you didn't get it, right? Oh. Um, oh, no worries. No worries. It's all good. No, I know, but uh, we did send you an offering and you didn't get it. Okay. You know what? I will uh, text her. I think it was a Zelly, and um, I'll, I'll try to get some explanation to her. Thank you again, my okay. friend. We love you. God bless okay. you. Okay. Love you too, brother. God bless Folks, we're going to save that program, and we'll be right back. Lena Adamalechi coming up next.